Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to make this little bracket right here for an AMC Javelin, which is this one right here. So a buddy of mine, he ordered these, they actually wanted uh, to double up. So I'm just going to basically recreate one here. This one actually looks like it's also plasma cut too. You can see it from the edges on it. So um, there's a couple ways to do it. We could just measure it and do it, but people have been asking for uh, some more like help with their 2D images. And I feel like if we take the picture, like we did here and bring it up, it'll allow you to also do more complex parts that maybe measuring isn't as easy to do. So what we're gonna do first is take a good, I'll show you how to take a good image or talk about it with the scale in the background and then bring it in the part and kind of trace over it. So what I normally do first is I go over, hit save, we'll just call this AMC Javelin 2 because I've already made one. And we're gonna go and hit create sketch from there. I'm going to look at my image. So you can see what I do with my image is I set it up against this ruler right here. It's in centimeters. I know. Uh, I don't like centimeters, but whatever. And I set it up along that so that now my part's in. I try to get it so that I'm looking straight down on it. But even this right here is not big. It's, it, it's, it's a thick piece of metal, so it's never that easy to do. I kind of keep it as parallel as possible to the ruler. just makes it a little bit easier to set up. So now that I have my image, I'm going to come in. I'm gonna create a line. I'm gonna do a six centimeter line. So I'm gonna come over and six cm, and there it is. Now that I have that, I can come and insert a canvas, which is gonna be the background we're gonna to use to model off of. I'm gonna insert from my computer, look for that image, hit open. Select face, there it is, it's nice and there for me. Now, when we do this, it's a little bit of a game. You have to come in and kind of keep playing with this until you get your six centimeters to line up. Sometimes it's easier to do than others, but we'll see where we're at. So I'm almost there. I just got to bring this size up just a little. Like that, and put my hair over. Let's see if we can drop this down just a little bit and bring it over. Like I said, it always takes a little long. See, like, it's a little bit under, now I gotta go a little bit bigger. And I'm pretty close for an AMC, AMC Javelin. Sorry, Chris, <laughs> that's close enough. All right, so now that I have the part, I'm gonna hit OK. Um, I can see here that it's slightly angled. I'm gonna live with it that way and hit OK. I can ditch this line now, I do not need it. If I need another one later, I can do it. I'm gonna come in with a line tool and I'm gonna start tracing surface. Now, usually when you do these, the closer you are with your image. So I'm gonna draw everything over. I'm gonna to try to ignore the constraints, right? So I'm gonna follow this as best I can, right? I'm purposely going over lines. I can trim up everything as I need to, right? So if I come up here, I'm gonna go probably right there down and I can come to where it hits the line. See, that looks good. Come across, let's see, that is, it's pretty good. Even though it's a little angled, come down, hit. All right, so now those little tech excess tabs are not gonna make a difference. If you wanna trim them, hit the trim tool, come on in and trim away. There you have it. I'm gonna add a three point arc to the top. Click both sides. And that's pretty close. It's not really, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna come in. Um, you could do this circle in two different ways. You could do a three point circle, right? So you can click three points along it and that's 0.550. I've measured this and I know it's actually 0.5. So 0.550 is good enough for this. And there we have the sketch of that part. I can come in and add the fillets. So I'm going to click both fillets. Obviously, they're too big. I believe they're 0.125 or eighth inch. And there is my part. I'm going to finish that sketch. I will extrude it the amount. Now, for CNC punching, you can extrude it any amount. It doesn't 2D surface. It doesn't matter. I always just do it as what it should be, which is 3H in steel. And there it is. Now, at this point is good to go to bring into the manufacturing tab. Okay, now that we have a part and it's brought in, we can do the setup. So I'm gonna click on setup. I always change it to box point right there. Um, 
if there's only one model in here, so it's automatically going to select that body or it'll default this until it's like that cutting. We are good to go. Right there. All right, the, no machine we have to worry about. We are going to then come on in. We are going to do no additional stock. It's the way I normally set it up. If you want additional stock, you can. Keep going through. And I will call this uh, AMC weight one. And check a look at everything else, and we're all good. So that's your basic setup right there. Just get it easier than that. Now we're going to come in and click on cutting. From cutting. Um, tool, right? We're gonna click in and I'm gonna go, all right, my tools, my plasma cutters are set up. Curve width with 0.055. That is from Langmeyer using their way razor well, they'll say 0.055. If you were really like, really wanted to dial your machine in, you would draw lines, look at the curve and see what the actual width is. And based on amperage that you're running at, you can adjust it in and out. And that's completely up to you. Nozzle clearance diameters, one inch, I think it's about that. And the head clearance. Same thing is uh, these are given from Langmire, so I don't change them. You can if you want, right? You can change your cutting feed rates and lead-in rates to be defaulted. Completely up to you. I, you know, I use them the way they are. Um, I might start playing with the curve width. I haven't had any issues, so I don't plan on it, but it might be something to do just to kind of dial things in a little bit more. All right, so that's my, so I click on plasma cutter. We know that's selected and that's in, so it's right in over there. It's curve width is the most important thing. Um, I go based off a hyperthermic cut chart and I basically cut these numbers right in half. That's always a good start. So I know that on here, they go up to quarter inch and they're telling you at quarter inch, they're doing 74 inches per minute. There's no way that the razor well is doing that. And that's for a quarter inch. So I would say if three eighths, would most likely be around 65-ish, 60. So I'm gonna go half and go right to 30. My lead-ins, I'm gonna give even slower. I'm gonna go 15, so that it gives it a chance for a pierce and moving and a nice clean cut going around. And I leave the lead out as 30. I'm gonna select my geometry, uh, just clicking right on the top, selects all the features. If you want to do them individually, you can. Some people, what they'll do is they'll do two programs. They'll do holes first, slower, and then come back and do the outsides a little bit quicker. It's up to you. I leave these loops the way they're all set, all loops. If you hover over it, it tells you what to do. And I do the start outside and then uh, kind of works on through. I don't change any of the retry kites. You can, I guess. I, I've never had to. I always change my tolerance to 0.01. It just keeps my program smaller. I've never had an issue. Uh, sideways competition, uh, compensation left, um, change, keep this in computer, finishing overlap, I never changed, roll around corner mode, and I always turn smoothing on and I keep it checked, 0.01, come back over here, lead in radius, um, thicker metals, you're going to want to play with this more, and we usually leave a bigger radius for the lead in, so I, I would go point. Two. We'll see how it works. Sometimes with holes, it might be too big. Lead in sweep angle, you can do the 60. Leave it that. Lead in distance, I'm going to put a zero. It's fine to leave it as that. It's basically there's like a lead in for that arc. And then put pierce clearance. I leave that. I hit OK. Now, if there's an issue, it'll tell you. So there it is. All right. So if we look up here, it starts, leads in, and it's going to go. Same thing over here, starts, leads in, and it's gonna go. Now, if you wanted to start a little bit further away, you would add in that lead in distance to it or change the angle. So if I come in and I go in, I think, ah, you know what? I kind of want a 90 degree angle for this. Hit okay. And now they start in like that and sweep more around or you can see it there. It's give or take, this is probably a little bit safer, keeps it away and then builds around that circle. At that point, it is ready to go. So let's hit save. And there you have it. From here, you're just going to go and hit post process, right? Always have your uh, most up to date post from Langmire there. Post it where we got. There's your cut heights. There are other post properties. I'd leave them as the height at which to cut from material. Spring back, I have not changed any of these post properties, but maybe I will go into these and change them a little bit more as time's gone. Torch height controllers there. 
take a look at your built in, right? So this is all preserved rapid movements and all this other fun stuff there. I keep, I have not changed, but maybe we'll do a video on changing them and see what actually happens when you do change them. Hit post. Oh. Right click, let's check this again. Post. Oh, I didn't have it. I'll just post it to somewhere. I'm just going to post it right to my downloads. There you have it. Post. There it is. And it's good to go. It's ready to cut. So um, that's how you basically create an image apart right from a picture and go through the post process for it. So you can see I took this right off the table, cut up pretty nice, very little, very little dross on it, pretty clean. Might be a little bit of a slight curve to it, but not really so bad at all. But there's your part. Not too bad for the uh, razor weld. All right, there we go. Uh, if you have any questions, and there you have it. All right, everyone, have a great night.